construction and engineering digest magazine cd organized constructs this conversation platform hosted dr larry tari coca in lagos as he speaks on the theme architecture methodology and a catalyst for economic development still on that dr larry tari coca basharun jk randu speaks on the professional and his contribution to the built environment and nigeria 1004 estate limited ceo speaks on the facility management in nigeria and the value of 1004 estates to this sector plus engineer Oti Sayenji, fellow of the nigeria society of engineers and president of the nigeria society of engineers speaks on his one year in office as president of the largest professional body in nigeria plus other interesting issues on business finance and the economy this is Inside Business Africa, Africa's business news and information leader. Hello, a very good day to you and thanks for joining us. This is Inside Business Africa, Africa's business news and information leader. Today we are starting something very new that uh, CED Magazine has put together. Construct Free Conversation is a platform not to discuss issues that is born in, in Nigeria and also development issues that will grow Nigeria and the economy. It was hosted uh, by CED Magazine and architect Larry Tari Koka was on the hot seat to discuss the issue. We'll talk about all that when we come back right after this commercial break. This is Inside Business Africa. Stay with us. Still inside Business Africa, Africa's business news and information leader, Dr. Larry Tarikoka, was recently elected into the prestigious fellowship of the Royal Institute of British Architects. He is the only and the first Nigerian to be so elected, and also he is among the 30 of the over 100 years old global body. Very significant achievement indeed. It was against the backdrop that CED magazine, in collaboration with Inside Business Africa, hosted him to a very important platform known as Constructive Conversation to talk about architecture and methodology and as catalysts for economic development. Inside Business Africa was there. Here's the report. The importance of architecture in this present economy in which Nigeria seeks her rightful position in the already emerged 21st century global economy cannot be overemphasized since the quality of human habitat and environment revolves around architecture. Therefore, architecture education in the country has to raise its standard to foster students' creativity and strengthen their interest, motivation and commitment to improve the environment since Nigeria continuously needs to compete in knowledge, development and innovation economy. It is against the backdrop of the importance of architecture in stimulating economic development that Constructs Keys Conversation, a CED magazine's platform, held the first edition in the series in 2017 in honor of Dr. Larry Tari Koka, Friba, FNRA, PhD, who was recently elected Fellow of the prestigious Royal Institute of British Architects, RIBA, the first and only Nigerian to be so elected into the 30 Global Fellow of RIBA. It is also of note that Dr. Larry Tari Koka was one time Commissioner of Housing Lagos State and has written two books on housing development in Nigeria. The event held at Four Points by Sheraton, Victoria and Lagos attracted dignitaries from the built environment and the business community including Basharo J.K. Rangdu, architect Tony Oliver Braid, president of the Nigerian Institute of Architects, representative of engineer Ami Maseli, CEO M Group of Companies among others. The program started with a short welcome speech by Mr. Kenneth Odushola Stevenson, the Chief Executive Officer, Century 21 Systems Communications Limited, the organizers of the events. And the quality of the people you know, we also reflect in your bank account. So if you, if you move around the right people and, and do what is right, you won't be recognized. And I think that is a major, a major achievement. And 
to that extent, we would like to congratulate him uh, once again. And also, we have decided to put a publication in his honor. And that publication is available here now. And uh, so that whatever you are able to listen to here, you can also go with a transcript of that in the publication. Thereafter, the president of the Nigerian Institute of Architects, architect Tony Breed, spoke on the honor Dr. Larry Tarikoka has brought to the country, being the first Nigerian to be elected fellow of the Royal Institute of British Architects, welcoming all the distinguished guests to the event and appreciating Dr. Larry Tarikoka for accepting to grade the occasion and congratulating him on his new election as the fellow of the Royal Institute of British Architects. Nigerian citizen, Larry Tarikoka, is one of the recognized by the RIB. It's something that will give us great joy and pleasure. Um, our institute had always been very dynamic and had also been able to pick up some international governments in the past, because we were able to uh, um, uh, contribute a, a president to the, the International Union of Architects some time in the past. And thereafter, we also had the president of the AU, the African Union of Architects. Before, you know, like every good thing, you have nine, you have the eight, we went into the middle of some decades. But then, um, we are in the process of the reformation. And uh, we are very much encouraged that there is a big people of hope that we can see in the person of uh, the Orlando and our Um we are very sure that uh, this is the beginning of greater things to come in Nigeria. This is the beginning of a big renaissance that we are going to get back into the reawakening of learning. We will stop the random chase for completed contracts, adding multiple zeros to construction projects, getting a amount of budgets that right now uh, the other price has also, or not the other price, the foreign exchange has also added the loan zeros. We are not able to complete most of those projects. We now have to look and listen to people who should be able to come up with the right critical thinking that this country needs. We need to be able to mobilize our best brains. We need to be able to have people who shall set the pace, who shall become role models. And we're very happy that the Nigerian Society of Architects and the entire Republic of Nigeria, we have found it in the person of Larry Tarabi Koka. We want to give him a special round of applause. I also want to say that maybe um, with part in partnership with the um, construction magazine, CD, we should see whether we can have a repeat performance of this at national level. Because you know, we need to bring the right political interface. The right political interface for them to realize that part of the solution to the problem which we are facing now may lie in architecture. We ourselves must be able to re-engineer ourselves and be ready and get the right guidance to start the process. It's been said and there's been a lot of accusation that there's been a lot of infiltration of people, foreign architects coming, they get people stand to join this and that and that. The issue has been that if you leave your doors open, then there will be room for people to come in. We still have many empty seats here, so many people can still walk in here and sit down. But if the seats are full, there will be no space for people to come in. I tell you a story, we went to watch a movie the other day over the Christmas period, the Silver Bed Cinema. I remember when the old boy we used to have this cinema, big cinema screen, it used to be a great event, you know, as a little primary school boy to go and watch cinema. And after that, cinema died in Nigeria for a very long time. And the cinema people died. And in Abuja, you won't believe it. Over Christmas, I couldn't believe it. We had to stand in a line. We had to wait for two hours because the theater was full. If we have built up the right capacity to engage government, to engage in the projects that are there, wonderful projects, as we can see, it's just one man who has shown excellence and he is doing it. If he was not there, we don't like people from South America, people from South Africa people from Australia, and so on. So you need to build up capacity. And that is what we go. We are still very strong and agile. We believe that for the next few months, I still have as president, 
will engage him, sir, on month-to-month -month basis to see how we can build from existing capacity. Because when you don't have encouragement, when there is no hope for the future, even that which you know will start to evaporate. And that is the problem we are trying we are facing. And that is why we are not the right, able to take the right position in, uh, um, in getting architecture to be the main catalyst, not at once, of our economic reconstruction and economic development. It has happened all over the world. It's not rocket science. Architecture is something that we all know we can do it. And it said that the quality of a country is judged by its architecture. Oh, well, that is the quality of its buildings. And I think with people like Dr. Larry Nawe Koka, there is hope. There is great hope that we can be able to reconstruct our future. Thank you very much. The conversation anchored by Oni Nwangu Stevenson took the live television format since the event was broadcast live on Facebook had Dr. Larry Tarikoka to leak discourse and spoke on the theme Architectural Design and Methodology as Catalyst for Economic Development. He started the conversation on his background and his journey into becoming who he is today. Dr. Koka stated that one of the things that made him to be consistent was the zeal to succeed no matter what. Stating the difference between Nigerian architects and the British architects, Dr. Koka said Nigerian architects lack opportunity, exposure and continuity. Why the British architects have all this? The RIPA was Bishop has contributed in many ways to lots of other institutions around the world. Same thing in South Africa, every Commonwealth country believe was the, the local institutes were initiated by the RIPA and we led the campaign to expel South Africa from the Commonwealth Association of Architects. During the time of apartheid, there was not one single African architect in South Africa, as our land was. And incidentally, the first South African African architect I met in 1994, and it was a lady. Speaking on the theme, he said architecture could be the stimulant for economic development in Nigeria if only the government can appreciate these facts and act on it as part of the strategic initiatives to get Nigeria's economy out of the current economic predicaments. Progress without architecture. You look at the ancient uh, civilizations, Egyptians, associate their uh, Speaking further, Dr. Larry Tauri Koka stated that it's the responsibility of the state and local governments, not the federal government, to develop houses that will be affordable for low-income earners nationally. He also emphasized the need to have more building projects in order to provide more employment and more economic activities in the country. So, now, once that state or province sets its, its requirements to the federal level in Pretoria, the federal level in Pretoria would allocate the exact amount of money for the number of units that it set. The conversation was also open to the distinguished guests at the event, all emphasizing on the importance of Nigerian government to take architecture professional. Then they asked you about environmental standards. That's when you, they riddled it down to the next multiple. And the final thing was the design. It was at the point that we did the design that they flew from Washington to tell us that we had won the competition.
we're talking about the person of uh, Dr. Larry Tarikoka at the Bashar in J.K. Rando. He's a very renowned accountant in Nigeria. And I'm sure many of us are familiar with him. And he was able to share his thoughts with Inside Business Africa about the person of Dr. Larry Tarikoka, his contribution to the built environment and Nigeria. Well, I think I've known him for almost 60 years, and um, so I think uh, I can vouch for his uh, outstanding talents, his um, combination of uh, being a creative person, combined with his business acumen and his um, uh, tenacity of purpose. He's always been very well focused uh, and he's very competitive. I see himself uh, as publicly de declared. And uh, far more interest is the fact that he's achieved this unique my story point of vain is not by accident it's more of a design and uh, i captured it extensively in my book unquantifiable graves the memoir of a president of the nigeria of points of yours i uh, came from a family where education is uh, is given a, a, a priority and um, my seniors were uh, very vast uh, were all very vast in one form of education or the other and I had senior brothers who were in engineering so that, that gave me um, a good start a head start in going to study points of view. I congratulate him immensely I rejoice with him, with him exceedingly well I pray that uh, he will continue to be the shining light to you know in architecture in, in the world. Uh, I pray that um, he will continue to inspire the younger generation. He has really inspired uh, a lot of us, not only in architecture uh, and outside the uh, architecture. I have been I'm, I'm, I'm you know privileged to be part of that. Uh, a uh, source of inspiration. So I wish him well and uh, you know, I congratulate him exceedingly well. Well, indeed, congratulations to Dr. Larry Tari Koka. When we come back right after this commercial break, we'll be talking about 1004 Estes. It's a facility management organization that is that was actually managing the 1004 Estes in Lagos. The managing director has been sharing his thoughts about the experience he had and also what he's been able to contribute to the facility management sector in Nigeria. We'll talk about all that when we come back right after this commercial break. How will you like your construction and engineering industry news and information? Blurred, complex and difficult to read. Or sharp, ready to read and explore. Presenting Construction and Engineering Digest Magazine CED Refreshing Clarity in Construction and Engineering Industry News and Information. Construction and Engineering Digest Magazine CED incorporating oil and gas report with news and information that work for you. Welcome back. You're still inside Business Africa, Africa's business news and information leader. Indeed, the facility management sector in Nigeria may be new, but quite a number of organizations are building new grounds in bringing this particular sector to the limelight. 1004 Estates Limited actually was an organization set up, a facility management organization set up to manage the 1004, providing the value addition to that particular estate. The managing director has been speaking with Inside Business on his experience and also what the particular organization is doing to make sure that estate get top class facility management services. The 
truth is that the recession is going to have an impact on property development, just the same way it impacts so many parts of our lives. You know, there's been a high cost of uh, increase in prices in the economy, fair price, uh, price for gas, uh, the dollar value has, you know, Well, basically, you know, the property business is like most other businesses, you know. Um, we, have, we require a certain amount of skill and amount of training to actually, you know, bring out the best in a recession. The recession brings out the best of the managers. So you don't expect somebody who is in, uh, not in petroleum business to be able to, then, you know, uh, manage a petroleum business in a recession. So property owners have to, first of all, put a lot of emphasis on making sure they have the professional people to first and foremost manage their property. Well, I, I think that's really good. It's a landmark you know, case because of the size of what we're talking about here. Uh, we are convinced that that takeover was illegal, not in accordance with the constitution of the country. The constitution guarantees the rights to own and manage property of individuals and companies anywhere in this country. That is a constitutional provision. We are also quite aware that the action that was taken is not in consonance with the judgment of Justice Daudu, where we sued the resident association for interfering in the management. Well, the outlook was quite bleak in 2016. Like I told you, there was just that mental adjustment and even the the, the, the shock of the rapid fall in the Naira. Not many projects were stopped. Many projects did not complete. Uh, I think now some projects are beginning to spring up. But you can also remember that we have a lot of completed projects. Office buildings, commercial buildings, maybe the retail section, the, the shop ride, the shopping mall and the mini malls, you see springing up now. They, are, they see, appear to be doing well. But in terms of the office sector, we have a lot of office space sitting down and they are, uh, they are all A-class office buildings. Well, our special report on the facility management sector in Nigeria will continue from next week on Inside Business Africa as we'll be talking with, with so many of the organizations that are offering these particular services to Nigeria. It's very key. Maintenance is important. And we'll be focusing on that in, in association with CED Magazine. When we come back, right after this commercial break, we're going to talk about engineering, and especially Nigeria Society of Engineers, and who's been managing the affairs of the organization in the last one year. We'll talk about that when we come back, right after this commercial break. <laughs> Still inside Business Africa, Africa's business news and information leader. Thanks for staying with us. Engineer Otis Ayeji, and since that one year ago, he has actually brought, brought to that particular association an unprecedented performance recognition and also making it one of the most important associations in Nigeria, especially when it comes to the issue of infrastructure. In the last one year or so, he has been able to bridge several gaps bringing the association to the limelight like it was. But today we are talking about this particular personality because on his own part, his organization, Otis Engineering, has done a successfully well by positioning the organization and consulting to build 10 power plants in Nigeria in the last 10 years and it's been delivered. To that extent, he's an experienced engineer. Today we will have him on this whole seat to talk about his experience in this special documentary on the engineer Otis ING one year as president of the Nigerian Society of Engineers. A year ago, precisely January 16, 2016, engineer Otis Oliver Anyeji, fellow of the Nigerian Society of Engineers, was sworn in as the president of the Nigerian Society of Engineers, the largest professional body in Nigeria with strong vision and determination to transform the association and make meaningful contributions to the development of engineering and the economy of Nigeria. 
The last one year, no doubt, has been an eventful year for the Nigerian Society of Engineers as Engineer Otis ING succeeded in bridging the necessary bridge across the engineering world, the public and the private sector and the development professionals that ensure critically recognized and tremendous milestones were recorded. The achievement of Engineer O.T. Sayenji, President of the Nigerian Society of Engineers, a consummate and integrity-driven professional of repute, has brought with it goodwill for the profession and the practitioners. The decision to become the president of NSC must have been born out of years of desires that make meaningful contributions to the profession and the industry. In the last one year, therefore, has the desire been worthwhile given the performance in the last one year and what are some of the specific milestones that could be referred to as eventful? It's been more than worth the while. Um, I had lost uh, the ambition to desire to become the president of the Nigerian Society of Engineers way back in the early 90s. And uh, but the journey um, took rather quite a long time from the 1991, 92 down to uh, 2013 when I eventually went to become president-elect, deputy president of the Nigerian Society of Engineers. And so, one must say that uh, it was clear in my mind what uh, those things are that I wanted to yes. achieve um, as president of uh, the society. I um, certainly uh, place high on my agenda the issue of advocacy. Um, to promote and advance the interests of uh, the profession. Doing good is one thing and getting people to appreciate the good and eventful performance is another. For the eventful and unprecedented one year of service to the profession and the country, what has been the response of the members to the various changes and dynamism that has been brought to the Nigerian Society of Engineers by his leadership? By and large, I am getting the cooperation of uh, members and of course uh, one will not uh, shy away from the very dimensions of uh, the programs you know, we are working on. Uh, for example, one of the first measures we you know, brought about is about the management yes. of the society. And of course, using the secretariat structure. And uh, we have identified, even long before we got there, that the management structure in use was non responsive to the needs of the profession. Again, the achievement is expected to put the government on edge, especially the fact that various sectors of the economy, one way or the other, is impacted by engineering and members of the body also cut across all sectors. How much of these performances have gotten the government's attention and the desired results sought? I love the president's speech for one reason and that reason is that the president also floated a motto you know you talk about change begins with me yes. yeah but uh, change begins with me is uh, is not a scaling kind of statement you can't measure change it's kind of subjective but there is a statement the president made in the, his budget presentation where he said that 
what we need, we must produce. Yes. Which India really adopted at the time of independence, 1948. Yes, that's Nehru. Pandit Nehru. That Jal Nehru was. Um, what you need, you produce. Yes. What you don't produce, you don't need. Yes. You don't use it. Yes. So that also is what we have to do. And then. Uh, recession will be a thing of, of the past. Engineer Otis Ayinji's private sector experience may have contributed to his unprecedented performance one year on as president of the Nigerian Society of Engineers, the largest professional body in Nigeria from petroleum, electrical, civil to agricultural engineering among others. This experience also put him in the best position to understand public-private partnership models and the power sector where he has acted as consultant on the NIPP projects for which 10 power plants have been delivered. Therefore, three years ago, there was a major shift in the power sector when the federal government sold the Disco and the Temco to the private sector operators which put lots of power for the sector in the hands of the private sector. Engineer Otis has this to say about the sector since the privatization and the status of the sector today. I had defined engineering earlier. When I say that engineering is the application of the sciences to the solution of human problems in an ethical, safe, economical, healthy, and environmentally uh, friendly manner. And that means that engineering in all that it does to create the various products and systems and processes that runs human communities specifically getting nigeria out of recession which the federal government say is the key point of the 2017 budget and engineering and economic prosperity what is the position of engineers in all these and how could the country tap into the capacity of engineers to ensure growth and shared value we ask we will continue with our advocacy like today we saw we had to take on the issue of uh, the closure of uh, Abuja Airport, which we say is awful. Nobody talks about that in the civilized world, so we shouldn't. Engineering has ways of doing that without closing the place. And we insist that will be done. Look, Nigerians can do it. Nigerians have done it. During the Civil War. The federal forces bombed the, the airport every night. And the, the, the other side, they sealed supplies from that same airport every night. Hmm. The remaining one year, no doubt, will be more eventful given the performance in one year. Again, the fact that the country must get out of the recession and investment in infrastructure is key, which is basically engineering base, must be at the front burner of governments at all levels. Engineer Otis Ayengi speaks on his vision for the remaining one year and the NSC in the next five years. Well, the state of the nation will tangle with the level to uh, put down the insurgency aspects. We hope also with the new movements by the government that uh, the militancy side also will be uh, contained and um, we should be able to uh, now establish an economy that is productive that is based on this one liner I was uh, 
uh, you know, healing the president for yes, yes. that. And that uh, Inside Business Africa is also talking about business, finance, and the economy of Nigeria. And that several things will be happening in the next couple of weeks. And indeed, you will want to stay tuned to the program every time on Inside Business Africa to get the best of information on business, finance, and the economy. Congratulations, Engineer Oti Saeji. It's been Kenneth Odisha last TV presenting. Thank you again for watching. See you next time.